Welcome to Maui part 4. This is the last episode of my little Maui series. In this one I'm gonna provide some tips on snorkeling, I'll show you some underwater footage and talk about the sea life you will likely encounter when snorkeling in Maui. And with that let's go ahead and start the tour. You'll find most of the best snorkeling spots in Maui on the west side of the island. You can also book snorkel tours with suppliers that take you out to places like the Molokini Crater. During my visit I mainly went snorkeling at Kanapali Beach as the conditions here were the best while I was there. And this actually brings me to tip number one and that is check the snorkeling report in the morning before you head out. You don't want to go snorkeling in bad conditions as it would not be enjoyable and could even be dangerous. You can call any of the snorkeling stores like Snorkel Bob to find out where to go. They also rent snorkel gear if needed and the prices are actually really feasible. Alright, let's dive right into it. Here we have the Hawaiian White Spotted Toby. They are members of the pufferfish family that are endemic to the Hawaiian Islands, which means they can only be found here. They grow to a length of 9 centimeters or 3.5 inches and occasionally are traded as a marine aquarium specimen. This right here is Hawaii State Fish. This fish is from the Triggerfish family and its Hawaiian name is Humuhumu Nuku Nuku Apua. And yes, I practiced for the past half an hour to say this. Uh, translated, it means triggerfish with a snout like a pig. With that pig-like snout, the fish has the ability to blow air from its mouth to sift through the bottom sand to get to the algae that it likes to eat. Here we have another trigger fish, the black trigger fish or humu humu ele ele in Hawaiian. It's a blimp-shaped fish with bright white lines running along its dorsal and anal fins. They do appear black but are actually dark blue slash green and you can often see a hint of orange toward the front of the head. They are also able to change color based on their surroundings. What you see here is an algae commonly known as peacock's tail and this seaweed can be found in the Indian, Atlantic and Pacific Ocean as well as the Mediterranean Sea. They grow to a diameter of about 10 centimeters or 4 inches. Here we have the so-called convict tang. It got that name due to the bold black stripes on its yellowish background. It has six black stripes which distinguishes it from the zebra tang which has nine. The first black stripe is oblique and passes through the eye. These tangs are widespread and can be found in the Indo-Pacific, around the Hawaiian Islands and in the Eastern Pacific. You will likely encounter several sea urchins when snorkeling or diving. There are roughly 75 known species of sea urchins that inhabit the Hawaiian waters. They are closely related to sea stars and sea cucumbers and use tube feet that extend through their pores to help cling and move along the surfaces. This is a really interesting looking fish. It's the Hawaiian boxfish. Males are blackish on the back with white spots and have bluish sides with yellow bands and spots. Females and juveniles are dark brown to blackish with white spots. This fish can hover off of the bottom, go backwards, forwards, up, down and do a complete spin, which is why some people compare them to an underwater helicopter. This is the yellow tang, one of the most popular marine aquarium fish. It is bright yellow, at least by day, because its body turns to a pale brown at night to camouflage itself from predators. Most often seen in small schools, it is a social fish. It feeds on algae and has prickly spines on both sides of its tail, called a tang, which it uses to defend itself from predators. Here we have the orange band surgeon fish. That orange band behind the eye is certainly the primary identifying feature. The main body color varies from dark gray or almost black to a very light gray. Their average length is 25 centimeters or 10 inches and you can find this fish in the tropical eastern Indian Ocean and the western Pacific Ocean. 
and clearly they like to put on the great choreography for snorkelers. Now here's an interesting one. This is a needle fish. They are slender fish that can range from 3 to 95 centimeters or 1.2 to 37 inches in length. The most distinctive feature is their long narrow beak with lots of teeth. They primarily eat small fish and are often seen swimming on or near the surface of the water. They are curious and are known to jump out of the water when they are excited. With those jumps, they can reach a speed of 60 kilometers per hour or 37 miles per hour. This actually causes danger to humans, especially for traditional Pacific Islander communities who primarily fish on reefs from low boats and these fish can cause injury as they jump over the boats and in fact represent an even greater risk of injury than sharks. This coral here is most commonly known as cauliflower coral, which can be found in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. The colonies are covered by wart-like growths called verucrae. The color ranges from brown to pink, and the polyps with their extended tentacles are usually only visible at night. Please make sure to never touch or step on any corals. They are very sensitive living organisms and it's important to respect this. Also, many sunscreens kill corals. So avoid all sunscreens containing oxybenzone and octinoxate. Sunscreens that include these toxins have actually recently been banned in Hawaii. Here we have the orange spine unicorn fish. They can easily be recognized by the bright orange forward hooked spines on the tail base, orange lips and a dark blue or black face mask. These fish can grow quite large reaching 45 centimeters or 18 inches. And when they are young, you will mostly see them in small schools in shallow reef waters. This here is a parrotfish, so you wonder why is it called a parrotfish? Well, the beautiful blues, greens and oranges on its body resemble the feathers of a parrot. And it has several rows of teeth that form what looks like a parrot's beak. They are often seen in small schools and feed on coral and algae. They are an astounding 90 species within the family of parrotfishes. A new study has discovered that the parrotfish is extremely important for the health of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia as it's the only fish species that regularly performs the task of scraping and cleaning inshore coral reefs. This black, white and yellow fish is a four-spot butterfly fish which can be found in the Pacific Ocean. As a result of their varying colors and patterns, butterfly fish are a common marine aquarium specimen contributing to 4% of the global fish trade. This is a sergeant major fish. They are more commonly found in the Atlantic Ocean, but this one is the Hawaiian sergeant major, also known as Mamo in Hawaiian, and it's one of the most common damselfish species in Hawaii. The maximum length this fish can get to is about 23 centimeters or 9 inches. Juveniles are often found in tide pools while adults are found over coral reefs. While they feed upon larvae, zooplankton and various species of algae, it's also known that they feed on the waste and vomit of spinner dolphins. They are found in the aquarium trade but are regarded as difficult to breed. Now here's something different. This is a moray eel. Eels do not have dorsal or side fins, so they look like swimming snakes. Their colors range from black, brown, blue, green, yellow, and white. There are about 200 species of eels and they can be found worldwide. It wasn't easy to spot and film this guy as eels hide in crevices and pounce on their unsuspecting prey as they swim by. They prefer shallow reefs because there's plenty of places to hide. They dine on squid, octopus, and hard-shelled invertebrates.
This is a saddleback wrasse. There are 43 different wrasse species in Hawaiian waters and 13 of them, including this one, can only be found here. It looks like it is flying through the water as it beats its side fins up and down in a quick flying motion. Beautiful blue head and green body with an orange bar that looks like it's wearing a saddle, hence the name Saddleback Wrasse. Alright, now to my personal highlight of snorkeling in Maui, the Hawaiian Green Sea Turtle, or Honu, as they are called in Hawaiian. They are native to Hawaii and are the largest hard-shelled sea turtle in the world, reaching lengths of 4 feet and weighing over 300 pounds. Their carapace, or upper shell, ranges from brown with yellow and light brown streaks to black, and their plastron, the bottom shell, is a light yellow. As adults, honu mainly eat algae and sea grasses, which turn their fat layer green, giving them their common name. With lungs two-thirds as long as their carapace, it is believed they can stay underwater for many hours depending on their size. The longest ever recorded underwater time of a honu lasted five hours. Interestingly, their eyesight underwater is excellent, but they are reported to be nearsighted above water and on land. Females may mate every two years, and after doing so, over 90% will swim from the main island chain about 600 miles westward to the French frigate Shoals to lay their eggs. This journey takes the female turtle more than two months as they island hop and graze seaweed off each island along the way. Upon arrival, they haul themselves out of the water and try to get as far away from the tide line as possible. They then dig a pit called a nest chamber and lay an average of 75 to 100 eggs per nest, digging as many as six nests in one season. Hawaiian green sea turtles typically lay their nests in the early summer months and the hatchlings begin to emerge about two months later. The sex of each hatchling is determined by temperature. The cooler the sand, the more males will hatch. Unfortunately, life doesn't come easy for small sea turtles. Just the simple act of making it to the open ocean is a massive challenge for hatchlings. Sandy shorelines and shallow reefs pose a high threat, as do animals such as crabs, dogs, mongooses, and even people who may take these young hatchlings. The first few years of their lives are known as the lost years and are spent roaming the open ocean or pelagic zone, where it is believed they search for mats of algae, seaweed, or debris for protection. These young turtles must search for food, and their omnivorous diet consists of sea jellies, crustaceans, and fish. Seabirds frequently spot them from the air, and many species of fish prey on hatchlings. The juveniles who survive these numerous challenges return to their coastal grazing areas after 5 to 10 years, mostly grazing on seaweed. In Old Hawaii, green sea turtles were thought to be the property of the Ali, or chiefs. They were sometimes raised in ioko ia, or fish ponds. The turtle meat would be eaten, the turtle's bones used for ornaments, or fish hooks, and their shells as containers. Some individuals or families did not take or consume honu, and instead thought of them as family deities, worshipping and caring for them. Please keep in mind that all sea turtles are listed as endangered species in the United States, meaning it is a federal offense to harm, harass, or even touch a sea turtle. Whether the turtle is in the water or resting on a beach, any physical contact is prohibited. Current research in Hawaii shows the Hawaiian green turtle population has increased since they have been protected by federal law. Thanks so much for joining me on this underwater tour of Maui. This wraps up my little series about Maui and you can watch the full playlist right here. And if you enjoy the tours that I put together on my channel here, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, hit that like button on the video and share it with your friends and family. I really appreciate it. And with that, I say thank you and Dankeschön!